Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges. But some of you probably know me better as Mike Nelson, the skin diver in the television series Sea Hunt. I'm going to try to answer some of the many letters I receive from people who want to know how to get started in skin diving. Alec Pierce, uh, Sea Hunt remembers. So I decided what I would do today is listen to this uh, this old record. It's an old LP or uh, 33 and a third record. Some of you may remember it. I'll just lift it out of here carefully so you can see it for those of you that don't remember. But uh, you see this? Right, there you go. A DVD from the 60s. <laughs> and that's what that is. It's uh, various names. Uh, vinyl, platter, disc, whatever. Uh, but it's a record. It's a vinyl record. Uh, and and uh, as you heard on that, uh, you, you, you could put information on this. It could be music. In this particular case, it's how to skin dive and so on. There are lots of thousands, millions of these, millions of these. So, and uh, this this particular one, of course, is is uh, part of my seat on collection for a very simple reason. This particular uh, record is uh, is narrated by Lloyd Bridges, Mike Nelson, and the title of this particular record is "Here How to Skin Dive." How to skin dive. This particular company, a record company, put up many of these. How to play a guitar, how to uh, all kinds of things. This particular one, how to skin dive. Uh, of course, they wanted to do that. Skin diving at that particular time, the fifties and sixties, was the most exciting thing that had come along. Uh, it was still considered by many, many people to be a little bit foolhardy, a little risky. We know better than now that it's a very, very safe sport. And but it was very, very exciting, particularly young people. And uh, so the company decided they would make a record on how to how to get into this new exciting sport of skin diving. Now, I should explain quickly, if you've listened to some of my vintage equipment uh, 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 playlist, uh, some of my videos, you know that skin diving and scuba diving back in the 50s were interchangeable. That's right. Uh, the most famous, the longest uh, living and uh, best known diving magazine that ever existed was called Skin Diver. That's right, not Scuba Diver. It's called Skin Diver. When, when divers first started using scuba equipment, it wasn't called scuba equipment, we didn't know that term at that time, but what I mean is a tank and a regulator, they weren't called scuba divers. They were called lung divers, or often skin divers. And so the sport slowly began to break into two, people who did not use a scuba unit, they were called skin divers or snorkelers, and people that did use the tank, they were called skin divers or lung divers, and then it became scuba divers. So today we have snorkelers and scuba divers. But back in those days, skin diving was uh, synonymous with scuba diving. And you can see from the front cover, that to Lloyd Bridges. And if you've, no, if you've seen the Sea Hunt episodes, I sure hope you have some of them. And you know that it was all about scuba diving. So there's some pictures. This is a very famous picture of, uh, of uh, Mike Nelson. I think this picture was taken from the very first Sea Hunt episode. I'm pretty sure it is. It looks like it anyway. Same equipment, same suit, same look on his face. And there's another famous picture of, uh, of uh, Mike Nelson. I think it was a promotional picture. I think this particular picture is a promotional picture. It shows him coming up out of the water. It's a still shot. Uh, so I think that was a promotional picture. This is an interesting picture down here. This is uh, Mike Nelson. And he's working with a very young diver here. And you see the very young diver also has on a a two hose regulator, a small set of tanks, and a wetsuit, and uh, Mike Nelson is showing him how to use it. This is Jeff Bridges. That's right, the famous Jeff Bridges, the Oscar winner, uh, a musician, has his own band, a musician, and, and, uh, and very, very famous. And he was in many of the skin diving episodes in the early days. So Lloyd Bridges, and that's his son, Jeff Bridges. I don't know if in this particular photograph that they're actually working on a Sea Hunt episode, but anyway, it's a great picture. So this is the, the record that was put out, and on the back there's a description of the record. Here, how to skin dive with Lloyd Bridges, and uh, there's other, other records, languages, learn how to speak languages, and different sports and skills and games. So this is a, this is a very, very well known, but sometimes it's a hard to get piece of Sea Hunt memorabilia. Um, these are not rare, necessarily, they are hard to get. I think there's a distinction in there. A little bit of work on your part, you'll find one. I've given away a few of these. Some of my friends have expressed an interest in getting one of these and had a problem. I've given them, actually given them one. I had quite a few of these. I still have a few. This particular one is like new. 
What you just heard a few minutes ago is the first time it's been played ever. That's right. The cover, as you can see, is perfect, absolutely perfect. There are no nicks, no scratches, nothing on it. The record itself is brand spanking new. As a matter of fact, if you know anything about vinyl records, you'll know that when they come from the factory, they have a particular gleam, gleam to them, a particular glossy gleam. After they've been played the first time, some of that gleam is gone. The vinyl record, by its very nature, it slowly wears out. It doesn't wear out quickly, but you can see, if you were able to get close to it, you'd be able to see that the first quarter of an inch of this now has lost a little bit of its gloss. It's because it's the first time I've ever played it. I did that for you. I hope you enjoyed it. First time, not the first time I've heard this record. I've heard parts of it before, but the first time I've played this record. This is the one from my collection. Why is it from my collection? Well, because not only is it in great condition, but it came with, or I was able to acquire, I'm not sure which, uh, everything that these records came with. So they had slip covers. This is what's called a slip cover. So th this came with a slip cover. And a slip cover is very simply a protective sleeve. There's two layers to it. There's, this is the actual slip cover <clears throat> that the record goes into. And it has a, a plastic liner on the inside. The plastic and the vinyl go side to side. And then that is put inside of this paper slip cover. This paper slip cover is uh, probably on there to uh, to uh, you know they it's, they put they say they put it on there for additional protection. I think it has enough protection at that point, but it gives them a chance to um, advertise. And so you see, this was put up by Carlton Records. I don't believe they're around anymore. And so this additional slip cover, protective cover, if you like, is put on there because it gives them a place to advertise why every Carlton record is handcrafted and usual sales pitch. And then finally, the entire apparatus, uh, that is the uh, slip covers and the record itself put inside of the heavy cardboard holder, that fits into a plastic bag. So when you went to a record store, here's what you would pick up. You would pick up the plastic bag and all of this would be inside of it. So this particular example that I have for my collection, of course, um, you know, I'm I say I'm fussier than you, but I'm very, very fussy. There's going to be in my collection. I want it to be as complete as absolutely possible so that it is complete. The actual record cover, the record, two slip covers, and the plastic wrapper that went around the outside. So I'm pretty proud of this uh, this particular set. And as I say, the first time it's been played, I, uh, I may take another half an hour or so and listen to some more of this and see what Lloyd Bridges has to say about learning how to skin dive. I have to be completely honest with you. White Bridges was not a scuba diver before he started the Sea Hunt series. As a matter of fact, he learned how to scuba dive the day before. That's right, just the day before. There were two people involved in his training. One was the very, very famous Bill Barada. Bill Barada was a famous scuba instructor from the 50s and 60s in LA, California. And uh, a lot of stars went to Bill Barada for training including Lloyd Bridges. He was hired by the, by the studio, Ziv Productions in this case, to, uh, to teach uh, Lloyd Bridges how to scuba dive and to uh, take care of him. And another person who uh, was, was helpful in his training was Zell Perry. Zell Perry is still with us, a wonderful lady, uh, lives in the Northwest. And, uh, and she was a famous scuba diver as well, record holder as a matter of fact. And uh, she was there for most of uh, Lloyd Bridges' training. And during many of the episodes, and certainly the first few episodes, where he was just getting his feet wet and learning how to scuba dive. A small interesting story related to that is that on his very first open water scuba dive, actually diving, uh, he had got the equipment on as he had learned to do the day before. Bill Barad was there well, watching him, and he had a couple of stunt divers as well. And, uh, and so everything was ready to shoot. Cameramen were on the bottom. And Lloyd Bridges slipped into the water and down he went. He didn't go very deep. I'm going to guess at 15 or 20 feet. Uh, I believe it was in Silver Springs where we have our Sea Hunt, uh, uh, sea Hunt Forever episodes every year. There's no one coming up this March. Go to the Sea Hunt Forever website to, uh, to uh, learn about that. So Bill, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Lloyd Bridges slips over the side of the barge or the boat into the water, puts the regulator in his mouth, puts his mask on, and off he goes down to the bottom to begin the underwater episode. He came right back. Matter of minutes, apparently, just, uh, just in, in less than a minute, he was right back on the surface. <laughs> and uh, Bill brought us in. What's wrong, White? What's, what's the problem? No air. 
<laughs> they gave him an empty tank. A little story that not too many people know about. But Mike Nelson's first scuba dive wasn't all that impressive. He had no air in his tank. It wasn't his fault, of course. And it didn't put him off scuba diving, but he continued to become the most famous uh, scuba diver in, in Hollywood and, and famous around the world for that. So anyway, folks, there you go. I uh, started this uh, particular uh, uh, video in my uh, Sea Hunt Remembered playlist simply to uh, show you that record, another little piece of Sea Hunt memorabilia. And if you don't have one, they're not terribly, terribly hard to get a hold of. Uh, keep your eyes open. And don't be afraid to send me comments. I love the comments coming in. However, I want no comments about my shirt. If you make a comment about my shirt, then you're really making a comment about Kevin. Because Kevin makes me wear these shirts. He says for the Sea Hunt, remember videos I should have on a, a, you know, a bright shirt, a Hawaiian type of shirt. And I have many, so you'll be seeing more. Maybe not quite as bright as this one. But uh, you know, no comments about that. It's just my shirt. And uh, Kevin's very sensitive. He may be a big, tough guy, but he's very sensitive, so be careful, please. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce, Sea Hunt Remembered. Talk to you soon.